This is the Rio Grande in the year 1887, a river that forms a natural barrier between the United States and Mexico. Gets one. Come on. Ah! Hey, look underneath this boat there. I'll take a shit. See if we can find it. We throw it right in, in the water. Good. Oh, good. Oh, wait. Hey, look! Up there! Watch it! Come on! Come on! open. Those characters might come back. Oh, Senor Gallagher. Just good to see you. It's good to see you, Tomas. You all right? That's my, my shoulder. Oh. Uh, Sister Crease, you'll be all right. See, I am lucky you boys arrived. We knew we were supposed to meet a Mexican Secret Service agent down here, but we had no idea it'd be you. You know why we meet? No, no, it's something about mining trouble down here. See, si. a tungsten mine in San Pablo. Tungsten is very important to your country and ours, senores. It certainly is. We're getting most of our supply from you people. Stoney, you'd better get his horse. We think the trouble is being made by another group of Americans. That is why we call on you, amigo. My country hesitates to interfere. It does not wish to make a mistake that would cause trouble between your country and mine. What is all the trouble down there? I do not know. First it was fighting. Now there is a strange sickness. And yesterday I received a message from Conroy, the company superintendent. The mine is closed. Say, these uh, fellows that tried to kill you, were they Mexicans or Americanos? I do not know. But they started following me immediately after I received Conroy's message in San Pablo. San Pablo? That's about 60 miles south, isn't it? See, si. And you'd better take care, Pat. Your only authority will be what you are wearing in your holsters. Look, just get me on my horse and I'll head for a doctor on the American side. Eh? Now, wait a minute. That's a you promise? Uh, See, si. I promise. <laughs> Adios. Good luck, amigos. Adios. Well, Stoney, we'd better head south. Only two? They've got to be stopped. Yeah, I, I know that, but these men, these men are federal men, gunfighters. Federal men, huh? 
You'll have to get them before they reach San Pablo. You understand? You know that I understand. Marquis, blow the horn. for two and a half days. How far do you think we come, Pat? Well, I don't know for sure, but can't be too far from here to San Pablo. Say, you know, those fellas that have been in back of us, I wonder if they're trailing us. Could be. Say, Pat, why is this tungsten so important? Well, I'll tell you, Stoney. Tungsten has one of the highest melting points of any metal known. They make some of the finest steel in the world out of it. Yeah. I think we'd better head for that outcropping right ahead of us. Yeah, they look kind of bad. Hey! Those fellows are following us. We'll have to hold them up from here. Come on. this situation at all. Don't worry, little man. I'll protect you. Yeah, we'll start protecting, because here they come. Over there they are. Now we get them. Ha! Tony, shoot over their heads. Maybe we can scare them off. We don't want to get in trouble below the border. Let's go. Pretty good shots. We gotta be pretty bad, too. Stoney, they're gonna come back. I wish they wouldn't. It's too darn hot for this kind of nonsense. Say, Pat, maybe we can give them a duck here by getting back through those rocks. Hey, that's a good idea, Stoney. You pick up the horses, I'll cover our tracks. Where the heck did they go this time? Maybe we're trying to fight. Come on, anyway. Let's go. Come on. Yeah, looks like we lost them, Stoney. Yeah. I'm still unhappy. Why? No more water. Yeah. Well, we can't do anything about it. We've just got to move on. Let's go. Let's rest. Still thirsty? I've been spitting cotton for the last hour, and you know it. Me too. You know something? I'm beginning to think that we might be lost. Hey, look. Hey, it looks like you were trying to get to that water. Yeah. Here. Here, get him some. We might be able to save him. Here, give him some. You can't use it, Stoney. Oh. Well, I sure can. Wait a minute, Stoney. What's don't, the idea? Don't drink that. This man didn't die from thirst. He died from sickness. That water may not be safe. Oh, thanks for telling me. 
If you don't mind if I keep the canteen, do you? No, just don't drink any of it. I guess you're gonna split the cotton for a few more hours. Save a little of the water, maybe for the horses. Hey. What are you doing? Try it. <clears throat> hey, that's as bitter as gall. That's Chichona part. I'll quench your thirst. Here, chew some of it. For sure? For sure. Did you hear that? I can't hear anything. I'm too thirsty. You know something? Old Buckskin can't go much further. He's worse off than I am. You won't have to go much further. Look. That's got to be San Pablo. Hey, hold it. What's the matter? Look. Plague. Beware. No trespassing. Peste. Cuidado. No passe. Plague. Wow. Hey, when that mining superintendent said he had trouble, he wasn't kidding. They act like they don't want us in here. Do you think that I want to go in there? We were sent down here to straighten up this deal, and that's what we're going to do. Well, I guess if you go in there, I'm going in with you. I thought you'd say that, partner. Jardine. I'm Conroy's assistant. Glad to know you. We're down from the States. Mr. Conroy sent for us. I know. It's a shame you made such a long trip down here for nothing. Conroy sent that message before he knew it was happening. Well, no offense to you fellas, but what we need down here is doctors instead of troubleshooters. Well, I'm sorry we don't fit the bill. Where's Mr. Conroy? I'm afraid that's no go either. Conroy's dead of the fever along with a lot of miners. If you two fellows were smart, you'd head back for the border. That may be good advice, but I think we'll hang around for a while. What kind of fever is this? The Mexican doctor we have down here says it's a form of malaria. Right? Yeah. The whole town's down with it. Sorry to hear that. Well, Stoney, we'd better take care of our horses. They took a beating coming down. That's for sure. See you, Jardine. guys in a pretty tough spot. Yeah. A thing like this makes you feel pretty helpless. I see you had visitors. Americanos, weren't they? Yeah. I thought I told you to stop them before they reached here. We tried, but they were too tough. Go, man! You let them out smudge. They will be easy to take care of the others down here. Well, just be sure you do it quick before they find out Conroy died of a bullet instead of fever. I'll make sure of it. Don't worry. Only three more days of shutdown, you see? And then the company loses operations contract. I know. Just have your men move in fast. Hey, Pat, those fellas look pretty sick. They were sick, Tony, but they're dead now. I guess they're getting ready to take them out and bury them. You know, Pat, this is grim. We're wearing our guns and we know how to use them, but there's something about this town I don't know, but I got as much moxie as the next guy. But there, this town just, I'm scared. You know something, Stoney? So am I. These people are in a lot of trouble. Maybe we can stick around and help. What do you say? I'm with you. Like I said before, I don't like it, but I'm with you. Good boy. Alto allí. You will put your hands up, senores. Andele pronto. But quick, senores. Hágase para atrás. Now you will walk down the street ahead of me until I tell you to stop. Vamos, come in here. Parse ahí. 
Doctor, hay de americanos. Tenme en. Vamos, para adentro. All right, now that we're here, let's stop all this foolishness. What's this all about? Get the name of you. You'll excuse me. You'll tell me your names. My name's Gallagher. Crockett. I'm El Dr. Gomez. You might say I'm in charge around here. When did you come in San Pablo? Oh, well, maybe an hour ago. Then you must have seen the sign we have outside the town. Yes, we saw the sign. Then why did you come in here, then? The Apex Mining Company is in trouble, and trouble is our business. That's why we're here. Mining business? You do not seem to understand that this town is in the grip of a deadly epidemic. No one is allowed on the street. San Pablo is under a form of martial law. Should you attempt to leave without my permission, I'll have you shot. Shot? What for? It is my duty to see that the disease does not spread through all Mexico or across the border. And I repeat, I'll have you shot if you disobey me. You have a problem, all right, Doc. Come on, Tony. This is like getting into a crooked poker game. No matter what you do, you lose. Stop worrying, Stoney. We got to do something. All right, here they come. Okay. What'd you stop me for? Well, there's enough trouble here in town. I guess they just ain't friendly. No, those aren't the people who live here in this town. They must have been those renegades that jumped us out on the trail. Looks like you've been having a little trouble. We've had all kinds of trouble. Do you know this Dr. Gomez? Yeah. He been giving you trouble too? Well, he acts like we brought this epidemic with us. He won't even give us permission to leave town. Well, that's ridiculous. Let's go over to his office. I'll straighten things out for you. Uh, I hope somebody straightened things out. Come on. Dr. Gomez, I'm afraid you've made a mistake. These men are friends of mine. Friends of yours? Yes, American Secret Service men sent down here to help. Oh, then I've been most ungracious. I apologize, gentlemen. But why did you not tell me you were government men? You didn't ask us. You had a perfect right, doctor, to be as rough as you like. Tell me, how long do you think it'll be before this epidemic reaches its peak? Gentlemen, this is doing everything that I can. But the epidemic is getting worse. And now we have just lost the last of our good wells. We'll have to move the sick somewhere else, and some Pablo will have to be abandoned. Hey, Stoney. Yeah? Now, what have you left in that canteen? Get it, will you? All right. And bring my saddlebags. Be right back. Doctor, cinchona leaves, aren't they good for malaria? It is excellent, of course. But where could you find enough of it to do us any good? We've scoured the whole countryside. I think I've found some not three miles from here near a little spring. I'm afraid you're mistaken, senor. There are many false varieties. And anyway, cinchona in my country is very rare. But I tasted it, doctor. I'm sure this is the real thing. I'm afraid it's too much to hope for. I have not seen Mr. Conroy in the last several days. Have you seen him at all, Mr. Jardine? Well, I thought Mr. Conroy was dead. Dead? Of course I did not know he was dead. It all happened very suddenly. Conroy died before I could call you, Doctor. Here it is, Doctor. Here, Doctor. Taste this. Cinchona. This is Cinchona. Where did you get it? On the, on the trail. This may be help from heaven. Now to test the water. Are you sure Conroy died from fever? Of course. What else could it be? I don't know, but... but... Pure! The water is pure. Where did you find it? On the North Trail, about three miles outside of town, there's a little hidden spring that comes down out of the mountains. I will send out a cart at once. Perhaps you will go along to show the way, eh? We certainly will, Doctor. 
Sure, Dean must have slipped out. How soon before the car will be ready? 20, 30 minutes, perhaps? We'll be very happy to go, Doctor. In the meantime, I want to talk to Jardine. Come on, Stoney. Gracias. That's the way, way. Well, maybe we're going to be some help after all. Yeah, we've got to find out more about Conroy's death. Did you notice Jardine leave while we're talking? Yeah. found a place to get water just three miles from here. That's bad. I didn't know that. <laughs> I don't we contaminated all the wells. No alibis. Come on, we'll ruin this one too. I'm not alibiing. Luckily, those fools mentioned the location in front of me. And I think I know where it is. They do? Come on, we'll go out the back way. All right. Gone. What are you looking for, that little bottle? Yeah, come on. Jardine. Where is he going in such a rush? I don't know. Say, I wonder if he's going to poison that spring I told him about. What? over there. This must be the place. Come on. Let's pull it up. Yeah. This is going to be easy, but... You fellas, you've got a date with Mexican justice. Come on, out there. Well, there it is. I can now report that the epidemic is over, eh? Thanks to the cinchona root, the pure water. Salud, eh? Salud. And thanks to you, both of you. Well, I guess we'll be heading north now. Amigo. Friend. It's nice to hear you call us that down south of the border, Doctor. You have many friends here. We will not forget it. Muchas gracias, eh? Muchísimas gracias. Adios. 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 Adios, compañeros. Adios. Ah, gracias. Adios. Adios.
Howdy, I'm Bob Terry, and welcome to another free Western brought to you here on the internet by Westerns on the Web, your home for free, classic, family-friendly Western television shows and movies. Get ready for a fantastic Western starring Russell Hayden and Jackie Coogan, and it's called Cowboy G-Man. Y'all are going to enjoy this, I'm pretty sure, and we'll see you right after the show. Bandits, hold up, man. High Taylor for Carsonville. You suppose the same bandits we've been following for the past week? Kind of looks like their work. Stoney, you stay with him, bring in the mail. I'll see you in town. Right, I'll see you in Carsonville. for the Army payroll. Oh, yeah. Army voucher, 23,000 gold. You're new here, aren't you, soldier? Nope. Just never been on this detail before. Got it right here for you. Happy? Yeah, we'll be spending it tomorrow night. Thanks a lot. See you later. things at the bank today. Oh, fine. Mail in yet? No. Gil is late today. But, but the voucher. That soldier. The mail isn't in yet. How did he, where did, I don't get it. What are you talking about? The messenger was just held up down the road. Ben Oh, then that was it. And they got the money. What money? A soldier. He had the voucher for the Army payroll. 23000 There was a pair of them. One stayed outside. You gave our pay to the wrong man. He had the voucher. It was all in order. I've got his receipt. How could you make yeah, such a mistake? Yeah, what am I to tell my boss? He was a soldier and he had the voucher. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You Army men go back to the post. Notify your commanding officer and tell him not to do anything about the payroll until he hears from me. Say, who are you giving orders to the Army? I'll let you know that when the time comes. 
We've been following these men for the past two weeks. Now they're only a jump ahead of us. Now get started. Don't say anything about this for a few days. I'll tell you when. Ought to be right past the rock. Down in that valley. Yeah, that's where it is. Come on. All right, boys, let me see those papers. Here you are. We just knocked over the army payroll. I know all about that. How much did you get? Never mind about that. The underground's got to get it to cut, too, you know. Don't worry, Fisco. You'll get it. But nobody's taking care of any money from me. Understand? A tough one, huh? Get rid of those uniforms, duck those army saddles, and get out of sight. Come on, man. Here's the schedule, Mr. Gallagher. Thanks. I see. Yeah, let me look at that. Just a minute. That's government property. My partner and I are government men. Did you find anything, Stoney? Just, uh, this. Hmm. Can you describe these hold-up men? Uh, they was masked. One was taller than the other. That's a big help. Well, the tall ones seem rougher than the other. Now they work fast. Seem to know what they was doing. But everybody knows we don't carry money on that route. And they ask about money. That was just to throw you off. Doesn't make sense. They make sense. $23,000 worth. Can't you tell us anything more? Well, now one call the other Jim. Now there's a real clue. Not much help. But I'm sure it's the same two we've been following. They've operated like this before. Then that's why you men are after them. You said it, brother. Come on outside, Stoney. You men will keep our identity a secret, won't you? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Found this in one of the mail sites? No, it was around where their horses stood. There's track, but that's your specialty. Rock candy. Imagine, a candy-eating hold-up man. Fuel said one was much tougher than the other. Called Jim. Rock candy. Not much of a clue, but it's the best one we've had. You know, this is beginning to picture. Maybe we'd better frame it. Let's get busy. Let me see that army voucher. Bandit writes a good hand. That's necessary to be a forger. One of them was a smiling sort of fellow. The other one, the one who stayed outside, was surly looking. Would you know him if you ever saw him again? Mister, I'd know that fair any place, any time. The one outside, too? I could see him through the door. So they locked this up in your safe. And thanks. Oh, uh, you better start wearing a gun, just in case. Must be part Indian. It's there if you can read it. They headed west, huh? Mountain country and rocks ahead. Yeah, not even an Indian can track over rocks. You know, Stoney, that feeling you get when somebody's watching you? Yeah. 
Well, I've got it now. It's strong. Me too, but uh, I can't see a soul. I still get that feeling. Tell me all about it. These are the same tracks. They're our boys, all right. And they're heading right toward those hills with all the rocks on them. Well, I guess we'll have to comb the hills. It's a lot of hills for just the two of us, but let's get started. Hey, Matt. Yeah? I don't trust that Frisco no how. He's got his eye on our money. Well, I don't know. He's part of the underground. Wouldn't dare pull nothing. Yeah, but I don't figure he's honest. You know, Matt, I think we could make a break out of here. He says the soldiers have got us blocked. I've been thinking. There's only one man in town seen us good enough to recognize us. Oh, Jim, take it easy. And with him out of the way... I don't like it, Jim. I ain't taking you along. You stay here and keep an eye on Frisco. And watch that money. Well, be careful. Don't worry about a thing, Matt. I'll have an airtight alibi. Looks like that fellow's headed for Carsonville. Down by that cabin, I can make out a horse, but I can't see a man. One fella going to town and the other in the cabin. Say, maybe that adds to something. Well, it's something we can sure check. There's only one fellow who can identify those bandits. Oh, that uh, bank man, uh, uh, Charlie Wall. That's right. He's our main witness. He might be getting in trouble. You check the cabin. place you got here. Yeah, we like it. What's your business, stranger? Horses. But I've been looking for a couple of friends of mine, and I just can't seem to catch up with them. Now, uh, who might these fellers be? Well, one's Billy Karen, and uh, Hank Jackson's the other one. Did you ever hear of them? Never did. What do they look like? Well, uh, one's taller than the other. That's Billy. He's kind of quick-tempered and rough. And Hank is uh, a little shorter and kind of easy-going, like. Sounds like most anybody. Yep, most anybody. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. Looks like we need some water. Come through Carsonville? Yeah. Any excitement? No excitement. The country's kind of dead.
the bank teller. Yeah, what about it? Charlie Wall lives? He lives over on the edge of town, east of ways. Is this fellow a native? Nope, he just rode in. Have you ever seen him before? Not that I know of. He looks sort of familiar like, uh, but I couldn't say for sure. Pardon me, stranger. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Yeah, what's on your mind? Well, I'm looking for a couple of friends of mine. Thought you might know them. Where are you from? I'm from a lot of places. Yeah, I know that, but I mean the last place. I don't like nosy people. That's none of your business. Kind of touchy, aren't you? Well, maybe you got a reason to be. Been shot. I just found him out by the corral. Badly? I don't know. Keep an eye on him. I'll check on the condition of walls. Right. Fellow's gone. What happened? He got away. You never will have it. Didn't you hear that somebody describe you and Jim? He did. Get out. I heard there were snoopers in these here hills, and this here is one of them. Well, what are we going to do about it? Do? Shoot him, of course. Now, don't do nothing about that till Jim comes. be caught before now. This one's going to die. Well, we all got to die someday, but uh, I'd advise you not to try it on me right now. Wait for Jim, I tell you. That's a good idea. Wait for Jim. Shut up. Jim ain't giving me no orders.
Yeah, I hear you, Jim. Miss goes trying to get away. There must be some way out. Them fellas up there shoot too good. Stop that money. We're going to make a run for it. Looks like they're going to make a break for it. Down we go. How's yours? Oh, he's as cold as this one. Look at this. This is a lead on the underground of criminals we've been hearing about. Oh, good. Army identification. That man's a deserter. Yeah, that's how they knew so much about that payroll voucher. Oh, say, I uh, found this piece of rock candy in this other fella. Well, I guess that about does it. Let's get our prisoners into town. Come on. Come on. There's your money, mister. There's your prisoners. I guess we'd better wire wash them, tell them our job's done. Yeah, they'll get the book thrown at them. They got them for robbery, forgery, desertion. Don't forget the murder of Charlie Wall. I ain't no bounty jumper. That was Jim. Keep your mouth shut, Matt. He signed up just to get the money for enlisting, and then let out. That's how he got the uniforms. Next time you sign anything, it'll be a prison record. Now, you're eating the evidence. Well, that ain't evidence. That's just a little old clue. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> This episode of Cowboy G Men, brought to you free here on the internet by Westerns on the Web, your home for free, classic, family friendly Western television shows and movies. Thanks again for joining us. Come by and see us. We hope to see you on down the trail. Have a great day.